Hi, Hi everyone. everyone! Today we would like to share our fertility journey with you, so enjoy! about a year after we were married. My contraceptive pill started causing problems and I was really moody and I just felt sick all the time and my hormones were just all over the place. So we decided that since we were already planning on having a baby not long after that, we decided that we would just stop with the pill or that I would stop taking the pill and just see where it takes us. So although we didn't try intentionally, we had about a period of let's say eight months or so when technically it could have worked and we could have gotten pregnant. So this went on for about eight months or so and then Francia started feeling really ill. So my um, problems all started with stomach cramps. I just got worse and worse as time passed. Also I was extremely tired. I could barely walk or go out or anything. Um, when I went to work in lunch time so I had to go sleep in my car and I was so tired when I came home after work I just go straight to bed. Obviously that's not good for our um, baby making plans. So um, we went to the doctor and she said no, um, she doesn't think there's anything wrong, it must just be something like that. Gave me some mild little pills, she didn't help. So it went on and on and on and eventually I was admitted to hospital after for a week uh, of which I couldn't go to the bathroom, I was thrown up and um, I just felt absolutely horrible. Stomach cramps were very bad at that stage. And then when, we, when I was in the hospital we realized that I had crown disease. And because the crown disease was undiagnosed and lasted for so long, it meant it turned into colon cancer. So I had colon cancer as well after um, as, as a result of the crown disease. So obviously this was terrible, shocking news. It really came out of nowhere. But at the same time we did feel a sense of relief because finally we knew what was going on. We only had questions up to that stage. This had been going on for months and months. So it was a good thing that we eventually uh, obtained answers to our questions. Also at that stage I became very irritated with Francho sometimes because he was just sick all the time and we didn't know what was going on. So after this diagnosis Francho had to go for quite a serious operation where they had to remove half of his colon and about 25 centimeters of his small intestines and this meant that he was out of action for six weeks after that where he couldn't do anything um, he couldn't eat or bath or even tie his shoelaces i had to do everything for him and just take care of him also because of the crohn's disease that's why they had to remove that part of the small intestines as well because that was also infected affected by the Crohn's disease. If you want to know more about Crohn's disease we will be posting more videos on that later on and Franch will give you some interesting information and tips and just tell you more about that if you're interested. So after the six weeks of recovery time from the operation I had to go for chemo and the chemo would last for six months and involve eight sessions. Now the oncologist warned me up front that the type of chemo I was going to receive would um, cause infertility is about 50% chance of being permanently infertile and also while you're on chemo and for a while after that the chemo itself could cause a birth defect if you do have a baby during that period. So not only did we have to wait six months where I couldn't uh, even try to have a baby but also after that there were also nine months where it was too dangerous even if you didn't have a baby. So we ended up waiting almost two years before we could actually start again with our plans. So um, before the chemo started, I had a week or two window in which I had to go donate all the sperm we would need for the future so we could freeze it for future use. Not that way. So, um, yeah, to save for myself. <laughs> Nothing I need for to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah so um, yeah, so we're going to the freeze my swim to use later and first we had to go and get it tested because the medication I was on for the Crohn's disease could also cause birth defects. So we first had to check the quality of the sperm to see if it's even worse, um, worth saving it. So that day when we got home from the, um, the test at the hospital to test my sperm, we stopped in the garage and both of us started crying because we realized that day we determined how many children we could have or even whether we could have our own children and ever. Because if I was already infertile by then from the Crohn's medication, it means that we would never be able to have children. Eh? If I wasn't infertile yet, but might have got the chemo, it means that day is a day we have to decide how much sperm we are going to save. Because that would be the amount we need for the amount of babies we want. So it was a very important day for us. And the most upsetting thing that we realized was that Francia could die and that we might never have children together and he might not be able to see them be born or even be alive for all of that. So never mind just thinking about having a baby and having a family. We sat there and we realized that this could be the case, that we could never have children, we could never have children together and that he might die before we had a family. So at that stage, with everything that was going on, we had at least 17 months where we couldn't do anything. Our hands were tied. We literally couldn't even try for a baby because of the operation, the chemotherapy, the long periods of time that he had to set aside for recovery. And then obviously also after the chemo, like Francia mentioned, that there was a period of time that we weren't allowed to try because the chemotherapy drugs or the medicines would still be in his system. So it was so frustrating to think that although we focused on his health and to get him healthy again, just to not be able to even think about the possibility of having a baby for 17 months was extremely frustrating. Because we were so impatient and we really had to wait so long for baby, when I was on chemo we decided we would use some of my previous sperm of frozen and do try artificial insemination to see if we could maybe boost the price and get it started so long even while I was still busy with chemo. Now it didn't work but it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise because that same week my uh, body reacted very violently to the chemo and in the lining of my remaining colon tore loose and I was admitted to hospital once again. And this was quite ironic because we did the artificial insemination. After that, Francia was admitted to hospital. And in the same week, the same day where I had to go for my pregnancy test for the blood test and the results, it was in the same hospital, only he was on the first floor and I was on the top floor. I can't even remember, but I was literally there for visiting hours and then I had to go do the blood test and get the results. and. It was all on the same day so like Francia said it was a blessing in disguise because we I think we were a bit too impatient and although we wanted really wanted to have a baby it was all a bit too much at the same time okay so fast forward all of that more than six months have passed and I'm completely healthy again we've tested both of us to make sure and both of us are fertile my fertility is also completely recovered after the chemo so now we're ready to start conceiving a baby the natural and free way. <laughs> free! <laughs> and I just want to add that Francia is in remission, there's no cancer and his Crohn's disease is completely under control. So we are so so thankful for that and he's literally as healthy as he can be at the moment. So, yay! So we've been trying for about seven or eight months now, obviously with no success. I am on Fertimed. We're also seeing a fertility specialist at a fertility clinic. And yes, at the moment I am not taking the Fertimed because I had all four my wisdom teeth removed two weeks ago. So that's still a little bit painful and sensitive. But I just stopped it for those two cycles just to first get this sorted out. And obviously it's also a good idea to first that before you get pregnant so at the moment we are not trying this cycle we'll probably start trying the next cycle again but we are hopeful and positive and what else in love yeah. <laughs>
So if we look at all of this and our entire story, what do you think is the upside to all of this? Well, I think because we want the baby so much and we have to wait such a long time, when the baby does come, we won't mind if the baby has a death in that we in the night. We'll just be excited to actually have a baby at last. That's what you think. I think we will still be irritated with the crying baby or changing diapers or nappies or whatever. But I think we will be so much more grateful and we won't complain about the small things because we've had major things <laughs> to complain about. But also I think it made our marriage so much stronger. I can't even begin to explain how tight we are and just how close we are and just the relationship that we've built through this entire thing because it's something you can't explain to someone else. It's something you can't explain to your friends or really your family or whatever um, because each situation is unique. And I think that because we went through it together, we were there for each other, we supported one another, no matter what, I feel like our marriage is unbreakable and we are only going from strength to strength and it has just made us so much more um, appreciative of what we have and of one another. Because so much time has passed, I think we've done so much to be prepared for a baby and um, I I'm not sure what else there is to do I've we've read everything we've spoken about everything we've planned we've saved we've done everything that you could possibly do so I think one advantage is that we will be so so prepared and ready for when a baby comes I know that you might look at us and think we're naive and that, that nothing can prepare you but that's why I say we are as prepared as we think we can be. And this might not have been the case if we had a baby immediately or the year after we were married or none of this was an issue, then things might have been a little bit more hectic. So when the baby is eventually born, he or she will be born into a very happy and loving time. And I hope that he or she is very, very cute. But if he's not, we just try again. If you are maybe going through something similar, we would just like to say that you're not alone. Although our situations might not be exactly the same, we just want to say that we know how you feel and that this too shall pass. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is, the sun always shines again. Now obviously we can't give you guarantees about your situation and say everything will be fine, but we just want to encourage you and also do our part to help you through this difficult time. If you may be, if you are dealing with illness or disease and also trying to have a baby in the midst of all of this, we will be making some videos with regards to tips and just advice and things that we've learned and hopefully it might help you through these situations and just help you to see another perspective or just to hear from the experiences from people who have actually been through it. So these videos and tips and advice and the fact that we are sharing our entire life story here for everyone to see is our way of giving back and to pay it forward. So many people have been there for us and we've learned so much and we really hope to do the same and to mean the same to you. We hope to be pregnant very soon but however long it takes we plan to take you along on the journey so please join us watch our videos and subscribe to our channel if you would like to see more of us and our story and just follow our adventure don't, don't forget, forget to like, to like this video, this video. <laughs>